From Lake Tahoe, Nevada, ESPN presents the third annual Caesars Tahoe Billiards Classic. Sponsored by Corner Pockets of America. Tahoe, 6,200 feet above sea level. It's 22 miles long, 12 miles wide. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Caesars Tahoe. I'm Leander Riley, and joining me in this telecast is a noted billiards journalist, John Stravinsky. John, this is a nine ball championship. Each game consists of a race to nine or a best of 17 competition. But really, the tournament format is much more complicated than that. That's right, Leandra. This is a double elimination format, as in all nine ball tournaments. A player is not out until he loses his second match. Now, we started with 118 players. What we have in this match featured is the, are the two lone undefeated players. Now, the winner will advance to the finals, and the loser will get another chance via the loser's bracket. All right, the two undefeated players that we have in this particular show is Earl Strickland going up against Howard Vickery. How do these two opponents compare? Earl Strickland is a very emotional player. He's high strung. Uh, he has the capacity to become very nervous. He's a shot maker. He's a risk taker. He's from Houston, Texas, and he's playing very, very well right now. And what about Howard Vickery? Howard Vickery is a more composed player. He's uh, older. Uh, he plays out of Columbus, Ohio, and he's a thinking man's player. I think we're going to see a contrast in styles, and it should be a very interesting match. An interesting match is coming up. We're going to take a commercial timeout, and when we return, we'll have our lag for break. Be sure to stay with us here at Caesars Tahoe for this nine ball championship. Welcome back to lovely Lake Tahoe for the Caesars Tahoe Billiards Classic. This is a quarterfinal of the winner's bracket. Earl Strickland against Howard Vickery. Neither of these men have lost. Now, if you're used to playing straight pool where it's stripes and solids, this game's a little different, isn't it, John? Yes, uh, this game is not straight pool. This game is nine ball. It's played with balls numbered one through nine. The balls are racked in a diamond pattern. They're shot in numerical order. The key is the nine ball. It must be pocketed to win the game. And now we are ready for the lag to break, and this is going to determine who will break in game number one. You see Earl Strickland on your left, Howard Vickery on the right. They will hit the cue ball to the far cushion, and whoever gets the cue ball closest to the cushion near their hands will get the lag. And right now Earl Strickland's ball is a little bit ahead, but let's, that means nothing. It's how close you get. And this one's very, very close. It's going to be a tough call, a very, very I tough think call. it's uh, Howard Vickery. And Howard Vickery has been determined to be the one who will break. And our balls are set up. I should add in the beginning that stripes and solid is actually eight ball, and there is straight pulled, and this, of course, is nine ball. That's right. As we take a look at Howard Vickery, 36 years old. He's a newlywed. Just got married a couple months ago. That's right. Uh, July. Right, right. Your philosophy on the break, do you hit the one square on? Do you go a little bit to the side of that? Well, there are different ways of uh, hitting the break. I think a player at the beginning of a match has to experiment. Uh, he knows how he's been breaking the balls all tournament. He'll pretty much keep the same spot. He'll, he'll start from the same spot. If balls don't get pocketed, he may change. Our head referee is Jeff Matamo. And he, he, almost, he almost scratched on the break, but uh, he did not. Your that's thoughts a, on the break? That's a very good break. Uh, his, the most important thing is that he's free to see the one ball, the yellow ball. That's his first ball he'll be shooting at. And uh, he may have a little tricky time uh, getting on the two ball, but uh, it looks okay from here. The four ball dropped on the break, so he's concerned now with one, two, three, and five. He hit it a little harder than he would have liked to. See, he, here, he has a problem here. He snookered behind the five ball. That means he can't see the two ball. He's going to have to find a way of hitting that two ball. And that angle tells it all. Now, the, what he's looking at right now is uh, he's trying to go rail first. That is, he's going to hit the cue ball into the rail and come off the rail to hit the two ball. If he doesn't, his opponent will get ball in hand and uh, will faci facilitate uh, winning this particular game. 
That's very true. If you do not hit the lowest ball on the table, you don't have to necessarily hit it in, but if you don't hit the lowest ball on the table, it's considered a foul. And that results in a... He hit solidly. And oh, he, what he made it. He made it. Oh. Well, there, there's an element of luck there in that shot, but he did hit it very solidly, and he knows that that's a possibility. That's... Yeah, you see how solidly he hit it? That, I mean, he hit it pretty much dead center. He knew exactly where he was going with cue ball. Now he's after the three. This is a bank shot here. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful shot. Crowd enjoys it. It's very important that, uh, that a player gets his first game underway in good fashion. It's very important that he plays well in the first game. relatively straight That's shot, but it was a long a shot. shot. But notice what he did. He, the cue ball ended up where he wanted to. See, notice what he did here. He follows, follows the ball off the rail. Position is everything in this game. Fairly easy lay right here. Again, we're seeing another straight shot, but again, it is a long one. It's a good shot. Shouldn't have any problem from here, Leandra. How does a player prevent on a straight shot from the cue ball following the object ball into the pocket? Where does he hit the cue ball? Hit the cue ball dead center. In the, in the very center spot, and it just stops cold after contact then. He's in a good position here. The eight ball is straight in. He should just roll, roll the cue ball a little farther up, and he'll have a dead straight in shot on the nine. Incidentally, we have microphones on both of our players, and I'm afraid Earl Strickland is a little awestruck because we're watching Howard Vickery run out. So neither gentleman has had much to say as you watch Earl Strickland sit rather helplessly in game number one. Remember, it is a race to nine or a best of 17. Oh, and that's it. That's, that's the Howard opening game. Howard Vickery runs out, and that certainly has to be a little bit demoralizing for Earl Strickland. Yeah, it's not easy sitting in that chair. It really isn't. Fairly easy shot on the game-winning nine ball. And there's our score. Howard Vickery won. Earl Strickland nothing. No. That, that was a fairly easy shot on that nine ball, but, but what uh, the viewers have to realize is how hard it is to get to that point, the nine ball, the importance of position play in the table, moving the cue ball around exactly where you want it to. Uh, it, Howard Vickery did not really have a hard shot in that game. I was going to say, what do you think was the most challenging part of game number one? Was it the uh, very first or the second it shot was, that he took? or It was his ability to control the cue ball position play. That's, He's got another, that's a very good another break. Nice, it's another a nice good setup. Break. He's got a one ball shot that shouldn't be, shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Because he sank the five on the break, he will continue shooting as we watch the one drop in the corner pocket. He's not thrilled with position on the two ball here. Why not? Well, because the shot can be made, but uh, he's got the side pocket to worry about, and he's going to have to come back across the table for position for the three. And he did it. He does. Ooh. He does. Close. Incidentally, uh, the cloth that you see on the table is a trademark of Corner Pockets of America in Billings, Montana. It is a gold cloth as we take another look at the shot on yeah, the two Yeah, this ball. is a nice, soft, soft shot he just hit. Just perfect shot. He gets positioning as he wanted to. Uh, here he's got a nice, delicate shot on the three. Follows it up nicely. Look at this. This is going to get a hand. Yeah. You see, position once again. Perfect position for the he four ball. He has lined himself up so beautifully with the four ball, right between the eight and the and the six. Here, here we see it again. See how the cue ball falls up. Now look where the cue ball landed. Uh, he just left himself such a beautiful angle on the four. That's the name of the game. About that cloth, Leandra, uh, that cloth is not felt. It's a general misconception. It's 75% wool and 25% nylon. It's always been a wheel weave, never been felt. That 
think we Good might shot. see another run out here, and poor Earl Strickland is... Looks very much like it. He hasn't had much chance to show his stuff. He's going to have to go all the way back to the right of the screen. Yeah. He's going to have to hit the seven ball. Go all the way up the table and back. Makes the seven, comes back. Coming back. Look at coming. This. Keep coming. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's superb position. Just superb. Now he had to worry about getting snooker behind the nine ball, and that ball just rolled back beautifully. He left himself a beautiful shot on the eight. What's he going to have to do to set himself up for the nine? No problem here. Uh, he'll hit the eight. Uh, there's a slight angle, so he can come out uh, for position. I think he's probably going to come off the rail and leave himself uh, for the nine in that same pocket. Well, he proved me wrong. I think he's going to shoot in the side. And again, we're watching a stone-faced Earl Strickland. No reaction, just waiting for his chance to get to the table. But won't, it won't happen in this game unless Howard Vickery pulls a surprise and misses. Howard! Good shot. So Howard Vickery has a run of 18 now in this particular match as he leads Earl Strickland two games to nothing. When we come back, we'll break for game number three. Stay with us here in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Hi everyone, I'm Tom Mees in the ESPN Sports Center newsroom. Due to time restrictions, we'll be picking up the match between Howard Vickery and Earl Strickland in game 10, with Strickland leading by a count of five games to four. Now, right now, we're going to show you how Strickland mounted his one game lead. Pick it up in game three, Earl Strickland sinks the eight ball, leaves himself in perfect position for the nine ball, and he sends it home to cut Vickery's lead to two games to one. In game four, Strickland decides to take a shortcut to victory. You see him lining up the combination here. Earl trying to combine the nine ball off the two. And he does it to not the match at two. Picking it up in the seventh game, match tied at three. Strickland shooting the eight ball, sets up perfect position for the nine ball, lines it up and pockets it as well for a four games to three lead. That's the situation. Strickland and Vickery split games eight and nine. So we'll pick it up in the Lake Tahoe with the match in game 10. Strickland leading Vickery five games to four. Enjoy the rest of the match. Let's take a break from the serious side of billiards and show you a crowd pleaser, a trick shot. Hi, my name is Machine Gun Lou Butera from Canoga Park, California. I'm going to attempt a mass A shot here, hitting down on the cue ball, going around the triangle, coming back in and making the eight ball. If you're going to practice this shot, make sure you do it on your own table at home because they will not let you play it in your local tavern. That's because you might scratch the cloth. Lou Butera, the man who pocketed 150 balls in a row in a straight pool match, he did it in less than 20 minutes. Lou Butera, Machine Gun Lou. Back here at our Caesars Tahoe Billiards Classic, we're in game number 10. Let's quickly recap what has happened. Howard Vickery taking the first two games, Earl Strickland taking the next two, and then it's been a seesaw battle back and forth with our score now, five to four, and Earl Strickland will break in game number 10. Let's see if Earl gets a little luckier on the break here. He's been breaking them well, but uh, makes a ball and uh, doesn't wind up with a shot. I think he's going to like this one. I get a shot, I can't make one. Did I make a ball? I made a ball. Yeah, he made a ball, he didn't <laughs> he even did, realize he it. He didn't know he made a ball. I didn't know he made a ball. <laughs> it flew so fast, he didn't catch it. He dropped the four on the other side of the table, and that was the side he was standing on. I think that's why he missed it. Shooting the one in the corner. That's pretty good position play there. I'm glad it rolled that extra inch for him. Yeah, an he inch. Had a, an inch is everything sometimes in this game. The seven ball was so very close to his uh, cue ball that he had trouble. He saw he was a nine ball champion in 82 in Dayton. He's got quite a few titles under his belt. He started playing at age 11. He said as a youngster, he used to rack balls in a, in a pool hall. And then started picking up the stick and playing himself. And now he's getting a little fancy. Now he's getting fancy and the crowd loves it. Made that two ball and three rails for a position. Here 
an expressionless Howard Vickery looks on. Three, control that cue, goes a little too far. I don't know if he can see it. He's looking at it very closely. That uh, eight ball is just good enough to hook me. Yeah. Here we Hook me, snip. snookered, blinded. He can't see it. Eight balls between he's, himself and the orange one. He's going to curve it. He, looked, five. he was addressing it as though he, were, he was going to curve the cue ball around the eight to hit the five and hopefully try to make it. Otherwise, he can play safety. He can hit it. He has enough room to see it to hit one side of the ball and play safety. That's what he's doing. And that's a pretty Lovely. good safe. Yeah. And what he has done is, I would say, double snookered Howard. <laughs> Howard doesn't have a clear angle at the, the uh, at the ball. <sighs> he lays the five there and brings that cue ball back around behind the seven ball. So Earl takes a seat, we'll drink some water, while Howard tries to mark where he wants to touch the rail. It's tough. room see the path there between the seven and the eight <laughs> methodical player for this kind of money you can't afford to just step up and fire away twenty five thousand dollars the first prize yep that's a lot of cheese as they say in the pool world fourth place is sixty five hundred third place nine thousand so there's quite a bit of difference there the worst these gentlemen can do is of course fourth place but six thousand five hundred versus twenty five hundred I can know uh, I can guess which one they're after. <laughs> what are his options? Well, I think he's going to take an intentional safety here and try to leave the six ball. You mean intentional foul? An intentional or? foul. Try to leave the six ball in a bad place. Now, uh, he, you see, what he was trying to do was leave the six ball frozen against the nine so that that would create a problem mm. for Earl. Uh, Earl's got a shot now. He gets cue ball in hand. He gets cue ball in hand. Uh, he's going to look at that six very closely. That, of course, is the next shot after the one he's going yeah. to make now. Yeah. That's why he's so concerned with it. Five ball up to the other he end of the, the table. He has the cue ball in hand. He can put the cue ball wherever he wants. Due to the intentional foul on the part of Howard Vickery, a defensive move strategy. I, I think he can make the six ball. He's going to just try to bring that cue ball down the other end of the table and. Uh, Five. Well, if it comes back up off yeah, the rail, I, he's got I, a little angle. Yeah. Uh, he could have used another inch, but he got something. Yeah. He's looking he's looking up. He's not too happy with it. He has to put English on this ball, on the object ball. Uh, yeah. English is used not only to, to affect the flight of the cue ball, but also the, the, the object ball. You can spin a ball into a pocket. Beautiful. Beautiful. It was like the nine ball wasn't even there. Yeah, that's wow. right, exactly. See how close they are. Uses that English spin, mm. that spin imparted on the on the ball, causes it to go in. I don't think he could have squeezed a molecule in between those two balls. That was that was an awesome shot. Well, see, he's not happy because he wants perfect positioning. Uh, many of these players do want perfect, perfect positioning. That makes it easier. But uh, he really doesn't have too much of a problem here. He's going to draw the ball back. 
They hit the eight in the pocket and draw the cue ball back. It's a nice shot. Just to far enough off the rail that he can get a piece of it. And yep. in goes the nine. So Earl Strickland wins his sixth game, taking game number 10 from Howard Vickery. Our score is six to four in this corner final bracket. Now we're ready for game number 11. And once again, Earl Strickland will break. It's interesting, we haven't seen anybody win three games in a row. We see two, how. Two, two, and then somebody breaks the momentum. That's right. We, well, we see how a uh, defensive move can backfire there and cost yes. the player the game. Uh, he took an intentional foul there, and he thought that was the smart move, which it would have been if the six had rolled just another millimeter up to the nine, but uh, Earl handled the situation well. Don Armstrong, our match referee. Jeff Matamo, our head referee. That's it! Nine. First time! Nine ball in on the break. That wins the game. There we go. Let's follow the path. Look how they spread wide open. That's a good break. You see, that is not all luck. If you impart a good stroke onto that break, sometimes just a path opens up like the Red Sea. You know, it spreads open and the nine ball just rolls right into that In this pocket. case, it wasn't the Red Sea, it was the gold cloth. Just yeah. parted, and, and in went the nine ball on the break, and poor Howard Victory can do nothing but watch. Our score is seven to four. We're in game number 12, and Earl Strickland has done something we haven't seen so far in this match. He has won his third game in a row, and he is going to try to make that four in a row. Well, he's breaking the ball as well. Oh, One drop. Three drops. Three balls drop. Look at this. And the five. Wow. And and he leaves himself an easy shot on the on the two. Of course, that's that's hard to do. But when you when you break the ball so well and you make several, they're going to be spread out. Calm, Earl Strickland, right now. Well, his breaks certainly have turned around, and the paths we've seen him spread him out, but he might drop a ball and get himself in trouble. Like he wouldn't leave himself a first shot, so to speak. Oh, that was, last, that was well hit. His last two or three breaks have been awesome, especially his last one. <laughs> yeah. Let's try it sometime, make three balls on the break. It's, uh, it's pretty hard. I kind of like the one before where he dropped the nine ball on the break. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, scratch, scratch. He scratched his scratch. Cue ball in hand. So the six comes out. Cue ball will go oh. in hand. Very tough break. Yeah, he just just hit a little bit off off center. Well, ball goes in the pocket. Would have counted. The six ball gets spotted, but take a look at where the nine ball oh. is. And he is in a very difficult position because Make it, the six ball has to go right on the spot. Now look where the nine ball is next to that if, spot. If the nine ball is on any part of the spot, the six goes as directly as possible behind it. Do if they it touch? Can't, if it can't go, yeah, they, 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 they touch if they have to, if the nine ball is. If the nine ball is on, over the spot, many times you put the six as directly behind the spot as you can. So that won't be an easy situation. Well, first a he gets a cue ball in hand. Well, yeah, he has cue ball. Combination? In. No, no. I think he has a, a shot at the six uh, in the corner. I think he has a shot in the six in the corner to the left of the screen there. See here. Uh huh. He's going to use a, a little bit of follow English, it looks like. He does. He follows the cue ball nicely. Good shot. <laughs> Straight in. He's he almost amazed at that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, no. He's lamenting the fact that he's straight in because a player want, doesn't want a straight in shot all the time. It, it, it's not good for his positioning for the next shot. 
if he had a little bit of an angle there, he could put the cue ball out in the center of the table where he could shoot the eight ball. But uh, this is this is a blood test here. He's behind. Can't afford an error. takes his fifth game, but he still trails Earl Strickland seven games to five. We'll be back with our 13th game in our race to nine right after this commercial message. I'm Tom Mees in the Sports Center Plus studios. We'll be going back to Lake Tahoe, Nevada, and Leandro Riley with our billiards action in a moment. First of all, let's update you on the pro sports action going on as we speak this evening about the NHL and the NBA. National Hockey League, a couple of games already underway. First period at the Odd in Buffalo, the New York Rangers and the Buffalo Sabres. No score to report. But in Hartford, the New Jersey Devils and the Hartford Whalers are both on the board with a goal. McAdams scoring for New Jersey in the first period. Norm DuPont evening the score for the Hartford Whalers. 1-1 one -one in the first period of play. The rest of the National Hockey League schedule. Three other games. Toronto will be at Minnesota. That game starts in about a half hour. They'll drop the puck in Winnipeg in about an hour as the Pittsburgh Penguins meet the Winnipeg uh, Jets. And the Washington Capitals are on the road to do battle with Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers out in Edmonton. One other uh, news uh, note from the National Hockey League. Rookie goalie Tom Barrasso, an 18-year-old just out of high school a few months, has been named the NHL Player of the Month uh, with a record of 4-1-1 between the pipes for the Sabres and a goals against average of fine. 2.63. I'll be back with news from the National Basketball Association on the Sports Center Plus update in a moment. ESPN's a place to be Thursday. The NBA season is off and running, and Sports Center brings you all the latest Pro Hoop scoops. Then swing into three days of live golf from Hawaii. Hale Irwin and Arnold Harmer join a top field at the Kapalua International Championship. And Kenny Bang Bang Bogner will be rattling the boardwalk when he tangles with Mike Brown. Live top-ranked boxing features in Atlantic City welterweight slugfest. ESPN's the most for sports coast to coast Thursday. Right off the top, let me correct what I just said. It was Tom Barrasso, the Buffalo Sabres, the rookie of the month, not the player of the month. The player of the month, of course, the great one, Wayne Gretzky of the Edmonton Oilers, but Tom Barrasso, definitely the NHL's rookie of the month for the month of October. National Basketball Association, five games on tap this Wednesday evening. The action is already underway in Cleveland between the homestanding Cavaliers and the Houston Rockets. And in the second period of action, Cleveland leads the Houston Rockets by a score of 29 to 21. Other games scheduled tonight, Milwaukee at Boston at the Boston Garden. They're just getting set to tip it off. Later on, about a half hour, the Portland uh, Trailblazers will be in Dallas, take on the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, much later on tonight, 10.30 Eastern Time, 7.30 Pacific Time, New York Knicks at Seattle. And a very interesting matchup, I think, L.A. at San Diego tonight. Norm Nixon, the former L.A. Laker, member of a couple of their world championship teams, will be in the starting lineup for the San Diego Clippers. Reminder that Sports Center Plus will be back all evening long, updating you on the live action tonight in the NHL and the NBA as well. Time now to go back to Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Andrew Riley and more billiards action right here on ESPN. I'm Tom Meese. I'll be by in a while with another update. Welcome back to Lake Tahoe, Nevada for the Caesars Tahoe Billiards Classic, sponsored by Corner Pockets of America. We're ready for game number 13. Our score is 7-5 to five in favor of Earl Strickland. I'm Leah Verratti, along with John Stravinsky, and Howard Vickery is at the table, ready to break. Howard looking to get back into this game. He's only down two, two games back into this match. There goes the nine. 
And for the second time in this match, we have seen the nine ball drop on the break. Last time it happened to Earl, Str Earl Strickland. This time it happened to Howard Victory. Fair is fair. Here we see it again. Look at the look at the rack spread open. The ball's crisscross, and the nine ball just goes smoothly into that uh, upper corner pocket there. Miss a six. That's so the quickest. Now, now our score is seven to six. Ball. That's the quickest way to get back into the game. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and he is back in. And now we're ready for game number fourteen. Best of seventeen or a race to nine. Our score is six. Breaking for seven. Something good. Nothing but noise. Oh, everything. Howard asking for help from the balls, but uh, nothing but noise, he said. All balls are still standing. He left quite a spread for Earl. That's right. Earl could be dangerous from here. Two in the side, three in the corner. Just the way he wants it. Back out in the center of the table for that four ball. Makes the three. He's pretty much back out there where, he, where, he, where he'd like it. Can't see the four ball that's on the on the uh, white part of this the patch there. He's going to shoot it, I believe, in, in the corner side. It's going to scratch. Oh, oh. Yes. He called it. Yes, he did. So Howard Vickery, who gave a tremendous break but had nothing but noise, as he so aptly put it, will get a chance to go back to the table. And the four ball is spotted. Here we see the scratch. Cue ball control is everything. I don't know if he could have made that shot if he intended. That was no, a peculiar. Exactly, exactly. A I mean, that's, roll. he got a, what they call a chilly roll. That was a cold roll. And now Howard Vickery will get cue ball in hand, four ball spotted, and he lines up a nice straight shot into the corner pocket. He's going to draw the ball back for the five. Draws it nicely. Oh. Good, good speed. Here he's, he's got to be careful not to hide himself behind the eight. He's going to want a shot on the six ball. He's calling, come on, come on, and he's That's got good. it. Now he wants That's it to good. slow down. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, after a while, these players do talk to the ball. Down. He's talking about cue ball again. Angle. See, the problem is he, he wants a little bit of an angle. He doesn't want a straight in shot here because he's got to get over back to the other side of the table for the eight, which is on the lower part of the screen there. Seems he's got all the object balls so pinned against the rail just about. Yeah, they're not got frozen. A slight but bit of angle there to work with, but he's shaking his head. He's it's tough. Tough spots. Mm -mm -mm. It's interesting. We've seen Howard Vickery play throughout this tournament. Is he adapting his style of play to yeah. match his opponent? Yes, he was talking to me last night, and he said, well, let's watch this show. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, uh, Howard said well, he, he's going to try a bank shot here. It's more than I wanted. He, he said you adapt your play sometimes uh, according to your opponent and according to your confidence level. If you're not playing that well and you know it, you cannot try those extremely difficult shots. You may have to go for a safety or, or not go for that extremely difficult position. At the same time, the better you play, the weaker your opponent plays. So you have to weigh the tune. Sometimes the two. You, sometimes you'll have to try a, a tough shot, or else your opponent will know that you're not feeling so well, and he'll take advantage of it. I don't think either of these gentlemen has shown much in the weakness department. No, no, they, they both haven't. have made obvious mistakes, but boy, they rallied right back. So I, yep. the, I haven't the, really seen an Achilles heel with either one of these players. One time we saw Earl Strickland scratch on the eight ball. It was a relatively easy shot. He shouldn't have scratched, and uh, and he did. But he came right back and, and won the next game. Conversely, we saw Howard Vickery make a simple a, mistake. Uh, he's going to try a bank shot here. Ooh. Mm, didn't work. Tough shot. And it but, may be a scratch. But no. no, no. You see, now the reason he took that shot, see where he left himself on the nine ball, the white, the, the cue ball, the perfect line for the, for the nine ball. And didn't leave a shot. He knew that when he was taking that shot, that the the, uh, the percentage play. He knew that he could bring the cue ball back down to the end of the table, have a shot if he made it, but if he didn't make it, not leave anything. That Earl is. Yeah, we missed missed that by a mile. Get Mags ball. A little too casual on that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There we see Earl Strickland, the young player. He stepped up. He didn't take his time. He didn't study the shot the way Howard would have. Uh, so it works for him sometimes. I mean, he gets in a stroke and can run several games off. But uh, in that situation, he could have taken a little more time, I believe. Again. He just kind of jerked the cue up a little bit there. He jerked the cue up just uh, just as he shot it. He just couldn't pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. Couldn't pull the trigger, he says. God. Now oh, Earl's taking a, a, take a little more time. Uh -huh. That was a surprise move, that's for sure. He's Earl gotta, didn't expect it. He's got to go around the table, same way. Oh. oh, again. Right. Crazy. Get oh. tight. Has somebody got a cap on that pocket or something? <laughs> well, Earl jawed it. That's what you know, he he just One hit it a little time. too no, hard. I just don't want to win. He just I hit. don't believe that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, it looks tough. He's smiling. It's like uh, licking his chops for the kill, but he did say it looks tough. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's saying it looks tough because he just missed a, a shot that was uh, easier. So. Uh -huh. That face says it all. Strickland still has the lead. I mean, this isn't supposed to be a hard shot. It really is. For him. No. <laughs> Our score is seven to six. Vickery right now could tie things up if he can run he's out. He's going to shoot this in the corner pocket and uh, just gently pull the gently pull the cue ball back to the nine ball. Oh, he was fancy about it. Oh, oh he was, what a shot he left himself. He was look fancy at, about Look at Earl's face, yeah, huh? He's, uh, <laughs> he's saying, what a roll. He doesn't mind. Oh. Why you got a perfect duck? What the hell? Oh, boy. I, I think he just got a little too fancy on that shot. I don't even know about fancy. I wonder if his confidence was flustered because he missed a relatively easier shot before. Yeah. <laughs> he sit up there and he's really thinking about that shot so much. And again, it was a relatively easy shot. It's got to ruffle your feathers. I think we may see a safety on this shot. It certainly set the crowd a buzzing. Freezes him up. Freezes him up. Throws ball. And 
I think I think not only are the balls frozen, I think it's yeah. also frozen the, against the ball the is frozen. The rule is, and when you play a safety, not only uh, well, the rule is when not only do you have to hit your object ball, but you have to drive it to a rail, which is what he did. And he also froze the two balls, which means now Earl has to hit yeah, what a shot. Hit, hit the object ball to another rail, or the cue ball has to hit another rail after hitting the object ball. Or he could take an intentional foul, couldn't he? No, because that would leave the object ball in that would leave cue ball, cue ball in hand, hand for uh, sure. So it wouldn't do that. All right. And that would be the game would be over. Hmm. Ooh, that's a pretty good shot for where he was. It's a pretty good safety. Best he could do. Give you a hanger, man. If Strickland wins the game, the score will be eight to six. If Vickery wins the game, it will be seven apiece. So needless to say, Strickland would love to win this game and just be one game away from the semifinals. On this nine ball shot, uh, there are three possibilities. He could bank it all the way up the other end of the table. He could try to, he could try to cut it into the pocket, into the corner pocket, or he could try to play safety. Uh, it's unlikely that he would do that. And there's no limit on safeties either. Looks like, like he's balls. trying to cut it. He's trying to cut it in the corner, it looks like. No, no limit on safeties. Yeah, he decided to think about that again. I think he's trying to cut it in the pocket. He missed it. Kicked it in. God. He missed it. See what happens when oh. I start missing? I go crazy. Tell him. It's brutal. Well, Earl's got a fairly easy shot here. He's. Oh, that's it. Yeah, he said, that one I could finally handle. So Earl Strickland wins game number 14. Our score is now Strickland 8, Vickery 6. We'll be back with game 15 after these messages. Stay with us. We are back at Caesars, and we've got a trick in our bag. We thought you'd enjoy Jimmy Mattia pulling a nice shot. Hi, my name is Jimmy Mattia, and the shot that I would like to show you is what I call the boomerang shot. My wife, Ava, taught me this shot a few weeks ago, and this is how the shot goes. I want to send the cue ball in a north direction, have it immediately back up, and send the three ball, the red ball, in a south direction, pocketing it back into this corner pocket. Hey. As you can see, my wife is a very good teacher. His wife is a very good teacher, Ava Sunton Mattia. You saw her in our seven ball championship right here on ESPN. Jimmy Mattia, former world all around champion in Bull. And we are back with game number 15, and you are looking at Earl Strickland, and he could end things right now as we move into game 15. He leads things eight to six in our race to nine. Earl is on the hill, as, as they say. Oh, he needs one more game to win the match. And, uh, well, that was his first bad break in a few games we've seen. He didn't make a ball. So now's the time for Howard Vickery. Earl's sitting in a very comfortable spot. He is eight to six. He can afford to lose one game. He can actually even afford to lose two more games. Uh, so the pressure isn't really on him. It's do or die time, though, for Howard Vickery. That's true, Leander. However, never underestimate the ability these guys to run balls and run games. We saw Howard Vickery in this very match take games one and two. Earl Strickland didn't even have a chance to get up off the bench. He ran out well, to Rex. He's going to play a safety here. He doesn't do anything. Oh no, he's spanking the ball. 
Good shot. Good shot and position. Just gently stop for the four ball, which is there to the left. This is not a hard rack here. You can shoot that four ball in and you should have position on the five without difficulty. In the pocket Look again. out for that He's scratch. God. This game could be over. This match could be over. This match. He knows it too. What a costly mistake. Mm. The four ball is spotted, cue ball in hand for Earl Strickland. And if he can run it out, he'll I'm, be in the semifinals. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he will run it out. Looks like a pretty obvious spread here, but I don't know. I've seen him miss, yeah. not just Earl, but Howard also miss yeah. basic shots. I think you're on a pretty secure limbo. <laughs> well, let's see, let's see where he winds up. Oh, he did it? Yep. That's where he wants to be. He's Two got to go. the eight ball on the side. Two shots from this, the semifinals. This, this match should be history. If Earl Strickland wins it. The minimum amount that he can win after this would be 12,500. Yeah, the crowd knows it, too. And it looks and very Howard good. And that's it. Earl Strickland does it. Takes game number 15 and defeats Howard Victory nine games to six. And we'll be back as we look at a very happy Earl Strickland as he defeats Howard Victory in this winning quarterfinal game. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're back at Lake Tahoe where it took Earl Strickland 15 games to stop a stubborn Howard Vickery 9-6 in the winner's quarterfinal bracket. But Howard Vickery has not lost a match yet, so he will face the winner of the other quarterfinal, and maybe we'll see him in the final match. Earl Strickland, meanwhile, has guaranteed himself a shot at $25,000 and the championship. And our winner is standing by our John Stravinsky for a few words. Earl Strickland, tough match. Yes, it was, John. It was a very tough match. How do you feel going into the finals now? I feel just great, and it's, it's going to take a good player to beat me. Yeah. Meserak, Siegel, or Vickery, one of those three. Well, good luck to you. Back to you, Leandra. Thank you very much, John Stravinsky. And as Earl alluded, it will be Steve Miserak and Mike Siegel in the other quarterfinal. Be sure to watch your cable guide to see one that will air in your area. For John Stravinsky, I'm Leandra Raleigh. So long, everybody. Here from Caesars Tahoe, Billiards Classic. From Lake Tahoe, Nevada, ESPN presents the third annual Caesars Tahoe Billiards Classic. Sponsored by Corner Pockets of America. Tahoe is probably best known for its 20 alpine ski resorts, but when there isn't snow on the ground, it is home to over 20 beaches. The warm water in the summertime is 68 degrees at its high, 41 degrees at its low. Hello everybody and welcome to Caesars Tahoe and our semifinals of this nine ball tournament. I'm Leandra Riley and joining me in this telecast is a noted billiards journalist, John Stravinsky. John, some luck is involved when you get this far in the competition, but primarily it's skill. Very little luck, Leandra. Uh, this has been a grueling, arduous four days of play for these, uh, all these players. 118 players to start with, double elimination format as in all nine ball tournaments. If you lose uh, twice, you're out of the tournament. The three players uh, we have remaining, two of whom have lost once. Uh, one is undefeated. I think they're all up to the task. All right, in this semifinal competition will be Steve Miserak against Howard Vickery, and here's how they advanced. As John said, there is an undefeated division and a one-loss division. In the undefeated division, it was Strickland against Vickery. Vickery advanced by losing to Strickland. Strickland goes right to the finals. In the one-loss division, Steve Miserak beat Mike Siegel. So now it will be Miserak against Vickery. The winner goes for the championship. The loser gets third place. 
And now we have a semifinal competition at hand. How do you contrast Steve Miserac and Howard Vickery? Well, they're very similar players in style and deportment. They're both very calm, methodical, thinking players. Uh, Howard Vickery was playing quite well all along in the tournament. I don't know what happened to him in the quarterfinal. He seemed to have lost something, but I think he'll come back. Uh, his opponent, Steve Mizrak, he's, he's like a well-oiled machine right now. He's uh, playing just super pool, and uh, there's an intimidation factor when he plays someone because uh, he really, uh, there's no bounds to how good he can play, and that serves to unnerve the opponent sometimes. Well, we'll see if Howard Vickery gets unnerved, but when we come back from this commercial timeout, we have a special feature prepared. Um, trick Shots will have its origin and its history. But first, it's important messages, and when we come back to Caesars Tahoe, our feature and the game. Welcome back to Lake Tahoe, Nevada for the Caesars Tahoe Billiards Classic. We're in our semifinal competition between Steve Miserac and Howard Vickery. If you've been watching our quarterfinals, trick shots have been decorating our telecast. But trick shots are not just a modern day ornament to the game of pool. I have with me Robert Byrne, author of Byrne's Treasury of Trick Shots, an expert on trick shots and a great writer. Bob, uh, tell me something about the origins of the trick shot. They go back to the origins of the game four or five hundred years ago, but the trick shot itself is first written about in 1780 when there was a player in Hamburg, Germany who could jump a cue ball from one table to the next and make a shot on the second table. At the same time in Paris there was a hustler who would bet you that he could bank 30 balls in a row. Now this is in the days before vulcanized rubber so that was quite a feat. No mean feat. Bob what about the trick shot in this country? I understand in the 20s and 30s there was uh, uh, quite a bit of activity in this area. That's right there's a lot of traveling uh, experts who uh, shot trick shots. Here's Willie Hoppy shooting a double cue shot. When the ball comes back, hits it again, it returns to make a carom. There's Kinri Matsuyama of Japan doing a one-handed masse. Very difficult feat. The, the gentleman on the right is Charles Peterson. Uh, he's the, probably the greatest trick shot shooter America has produced. Well, how do you assess today's uh, current crop of trick shot artists? Well, all of the top players can do trick shots very well indeed. My, my own personal taste, I like Lou Butera for the, his colorful personality. But for sheer technique, I'll take Mike Massey. Those are my choices. Thank you very much, Robert. Back to you, Leandra. Thank you, John Stravinsky. I love that video of the Roaring Twenties when the ladies played trick shots. Steve Miserec against Howard Vickery. They're getting ready to lag for a break. We'll be back with that right after this commercial timeout. We are back at Caesars Tahoe and we're ready for the lag for break on the left side of your screen. Steve Miserec on the right, Howard Vickery. Lag for break, they try to hit the far cushion and come back as close to the near cushion as possible. The ball that is closest gets to break in game number one. Ready. What if I scratch? <laughs> Howard Vickery said, what if I scratch? I believe Steve Miserac gets the nod on the break. This, this is a race to nine, <laughs> if you scratch, which means it's a best of yeah. 17 competition. You, it like might scratch. That's you know? so, right, uh, yeah, Leandra, yeah, the balls yeah, are played with uh, balls ball, numbered ball, one through ball, nine. Pocket. They're racked in a diamond pattern. Balls are shot in numerical order. The nine ball must be pocketed to win the game. Ready? So if Steve Miserac can sink the nine ball on the break, he'll win game number one. And if he could do that nine times, this will be a very short show. We've seen Steve Miserec sink one ball on the break. He's capable Somebody's of doing it. To give me a cue -cue. Steve Miserec with a pretty good break, but uh, nothing, nothing went in. Nothing went down. Yeah. And that, too, is a rule. You have to sink a ball to continue shooting. And he did not sink a ball, so Howard Vickery steps up to the table. Game number one. Howard Vickery with a sweet little touch shot there. <clears throat> if you're not sure where Reynoldsburg, Ohio is, it's just outside the Columbus area. Shooting the two ball now in the corner. He's got a, he's got room to make it in the corner. He's going to have a tough time getting position on that three ball. 
Uh, that's a good shot. That's a very good shot. It's very tough when you have a when you have a ball that's uh, about four or five inches away from the object ball that you're playing position on, especially if it's on the rail. Boy. Well, he came out fairly lucky there. He's got the four directly in front of him, ready for the side pocket. And uh, let's see if he can get some position on that five ball. And he may be well on his way to uh, running a first rack. And what Howard Vickery is doing right now is actually sizing up how he wants to position the ball for the rest of his shots. The first shot at hand may be obvious, but it's the rest of it. That counts. That's right. This is a this is a fairly easy little run here, uh, except for one thing. That's the shot on the five ball coming up. Uh, Howard's a thinking player. He didn't want to try any more than to stop that cue ball right where right where he did. He'll take the tough shot here. What made that, that shot particularly tough? Was it the fact that it was up against the rail or the angle he had on it? No, actually, it's because it, it was off the rail, you see. And he's about halfway up the pocket, and he's got to get position on the six ball. Uh, he was very fortunate to, to glance off the nine and get the position that he did. As Steve Miserec is rather helpless at this point, he can only watch. I was in good shape here. Get out of there. That's what he's saying. Get out of there. This is a good force follow shot. You impart force follow English on the cue ball. And uh, that's when you need to go to a rail and come back up the table. Uh, he's got a little bit of a toughie here. Shoot the eight ball in the pocket on the right hand side of the screen. Come back up nicely for the nine ball. He seems like. Uh, think you'll go out on a limb? You think, uh, think Howard's going to do it? <laughs> well, I, I think he is going to win this game, yes. I love it when you make a prediction, John. Oh, Leandra, <laughs> you can read me so well. And you call the John Risky. Howard Vickery takes game number one, running out on Steve Miserac. Our score, Howard Victory one, Steve Miserac zero in our race to nine, best of 17. Earlier we saw some of the legendary trick shot artists, so let's take a look at a trick shooter from today. Hi, I'm Mike Massey. I like to show you a shot I call the Chattanooga Choo Choo Shot. I'm going to try to pocket five balls in rotation. One, two, three, four, and five. The cue ball is the only ball that's not supposed to go. They don't go this time in Cowan, Texas. Ho, oh, just like a choo choo train. Now, cue ball, you're supposed to move out of the way. There you go. Now, the four and the five. There. <laughs> Mike Massey, also known as the Tennessee Tarzan, the greatest trick shot artist in the USA today. Welcome back to game number four in our Caesars Tahoe Billiards Classic. Steve Miserac taking game number three, Howard Vickery taking games one and two. It's Miserac for the break. Mm. Hey! Oh, nine ball. On the snap. Took a couple of seconds, but it finally did it. Yep. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, once again, the ball spreading wide open. The nine ball just, just easing on through. Everything clears its way. Yeah. Real, <laughs> this is what it looked like. Like everything. Whoa! Look out of the way. The, uh, the nine ball's headed for the predestined. <laughs> right. You know. So Steve Miserak wins his second game, and now we are tied up at two apiece. Game number five at hand. 
uh, we talk about the break and element of luck, but really, when a player is playing well, when he's really stroking well, as Steve has all, all tournament long, that break, you really hit, follow through. He follows through on that, uh, on that break oh. shot. I'll tell you, the really oh. jostles the crowd, too. It really makes you pay much more attention to the next yeah. break when that happens. Such a surprise. That's right. They seem to want it to happen twice in a row, I mm -hmm. think, because mm -hmm. when they get a vicarious thrill out of that, they don't think <laughs> of poor old Howard Vickery sitting in that yeah. chair. That how would he like it? <laughs> I mean, fair is fair, you know? Except maybe Howard's wife. <laughs> Oh, that's a really sweet shot. Shoot over a ball as he just did and to get that kind of control. Just a, it's a delicate little shot, but you see he pushes the ball up and he comes back in perfect position. He dropped the four and the eight on the break. Saved himself some trouble. A little trouble here. Oh, I didn't eat my Wheaties. Yeah. <laughs> Steve is a big man, but it's not a matter of strength. Uh, of course, he's just joking, but he did. He means he didn't hit it hard enough. He didn't roll out. The cue ball didn't roll out far enough, and he's, he's got a very difficult cut shot here. Pretty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> Angle cut shot in the corner pocket. Sweet stroke. And he just sank the five. Boy, and right. now he's aiming for six. Yeah, same thing happened to him on the five that just happened a few shots ago. Uh, he made the ball, but he didn't come out as far as he would have liked to. Oh. Yep. Nope. Missed it. The nine ball was more of a mental obstacle, I think, than a physical one, but it did the trick. I think he was maybe worried about scratching in the side there. Uh, uh, he was definitely worried about his, his, his position on the seven, crossing the table. Howard Vickery was glad that happened. He'll move back to the table, try to snap a two-game Steve Miserak winning streak. <coughs> Howard Vickery has been playing pool for a living ever since he got out of the service. He was in the Navy, but he started playing when he was 14 years old. He's now 36. He just got married a couple of months ago. So Howard Vickery's having a happy year this year. And a good shot. That's a good shot. Difficult, difficult uh, position, but uh, sometimes you, when you make a difficult shot like that, you, you're just happy with, with being able to shoot the next shot. You can see behind Howard Vickery that we have quite a crowd here at Caesars. And it's a very a, popular sport. It's a knowledgeable crowd, too. Uh -huh. They applaud safety play when it's a good safety. <coughs> Tough shot. Gonna cut it in the corner. That's in the side. Oh, Don't scratch. Oh, he did. Look at that. There's Cue ball control. Just pulled it off a little bit to the side. Smack dab in the drink. Hard luck for Howard Vickery. It's cue ball in hand for Steve Miserak. And it's also in the lead. One, two. So Steve Miserak wins his third game in a row. And now takes a three to two lead over Howard Vickery. Bet he's kicking himself mentally. He is. He is. I'm sure he is. And uh, he hasn't played Steve Miserak before, but as if this happens to so many players now. Granted, he didn't miss a shot. He scratched. But when you don't control the cue ball in this game, that's the equivalent of missing a shot sometimes. Pretty good break. Six drop, but he might squash with stop. There he is, so close to the He's corner. Got a pretty tough shot here. One ball is pretty far away. Cue ball is right uh, next to the corner pocket. Gives you 
just going to roll it softly, play a soft shot. Mm. No, you missed it. You can hit it right. Yeah, when you when you hit a ball that softly, it, it's hard to really get your pinpoint control on a long shot. Yes. You see it here. Yes, it's going off. You can see how yeah. it's going off center. Well, there's so much cloth between you and the object. Well, ball. also, also, uh, you give it a chance to to roll off. You give the cue ball a chance to roll off. If you don't hit it hard, if you hit it a little harder, the velocity of the ball will keep it from deviating from, from, from its deviating path. Deviating yeah. from its its path exactly. That was a left-handed shot for Howard Vickery. Uh, uh, most all of these players are ambidextrous. They would rather shoot with the other hand. Then use a bridge. Then use a bridge, yes. More control. In fact, it's funny. This is, uh, I think, now one of the first tournaments we've done that uh, we don't see a bridge even laying under the table. <laughs> too it's easy, just, too it's hard. just not out there. Well, I'm sure yeah, there's one available yeah, somewhere, but there's, there's one available. these players uh, haven't been using it, they haven't been reaching You'll for it. You'll find that today almost all tournament players are ambidextrous. Uh, not that they can shoot their true speed, but they can shoot probably 70% uh, of their true speed. And if the shot is not too hard, they will shoot with the other hand rather than use the bridge. Tough cut shot. Quite the, can't do any better than that. Splits the pocket. Come on. That pinpoint position that they all want so much, that's why you'll hear players talking to the ball. He wanted two more inches out of yeah. the two ball so he could have a better angle on the on the five. Precisely. Uh, he made a nice side pocket shot there, but he didn't get the position he wanted. Oh, they're not getting any easier. What would you do? I would try to make the seven ball in the corner to the to our right on the right part of the screen. Uh, the eight ball is not too much of a worry because it's hanging by the lower, by the pocket on the lower lower right hand side of the screen. He missed. Uh, I oh, probably would have missed also. So <laughs> okay. I mean, we, let's not even dwell on that. So. Well, Steve Miserak gets another <laughs> chance at the table. While a dejected Howard Vickery sits down. You can't make, you cannot miss. That wasn't an easy shot, but you, you have to make a shot like that against Steve Mizrak if you're going to beat him. If it comes back just a little bit more, he might have a good shot on the eight. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, he's going to have to uh, do something to get the uh, cue ball to give him position on the nine. I think he's gonna go up and down the table. We'll see this. This could be a very pretty shot. Oh, I missed it. I missed, the I missed it. You see, that was the problem. He had to go up and down the table in order to get position. See, he couldn't just stop the ball. He, he couldn't just stop the ball. He had to send, send the cue ball all the way up the table. And when you have to do something like that, uh, can cause you to miss. Get on the rail. <laughs> Roll downhill. <laughs> Roll downhill. <laughs> Any shot off the rail, anytime the cue ball is on the rail, unless the ball is hanging in the pocket, it's, uh, it's more difficult. Leaves a beautiful shot for Steve Miserick. Yeah. Yeah, take it off here. 
He's, he's bridging on the rail. He's not. He's not comfortable. He's not comfortable. And he jerked it. Well, I think Steve Miserec feels that it's justice because he felt he should have had the eighth ball on his last shot. So. This is not automatic for Steve, Steve Miserec. Uh, either this shot here. So you're not making a prediction at this time, then? Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think he'll make it. Okay. <laughs> and a post prediction, if there is such a thing. Steve Miserec taking game number six, winning his fourth in a row, and our score is four for Steve Miserec, two for Howard Vickery. We'll be back with more from Caesars Tahoe Billiards Classic after this commercial timeout. I think I need to make it on the break about five times. In the <laughs> John Stravinsky along with Leander Riley, as you listen to Howard Vickery say he needs to sink the nine ball a few times on the break if he's to catch Steve Miserac, and there you see the score. Miserac's ahead seven to four, but Vickery's been chewing away at that gap just a little bit. He took our last game, game number 11, and he's ready to break for game number 12. Specifically, he said, I think I ought to I'd like to make it on the break five times. Five that would times. make the score nine seven in his favor. I, uh -huh. I think he wouldn't mind making it on the break five times. Well, the nine didn't move very far, but he made the eight ball on the break, and he's got a he's got a good looking table here. Problem problem is getting back for the two ball off the one. God, I just uh, shoot right in the air. What happened? Uh, Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Had to draw the cue ball back and uh, caused him to uh, you know, caused him to miss the shot. Steve has a combination here. One three. He hit it pretty true. Oh. Look at this. These balls are taking funny rolls. He's. That was a chilly roll. He uh, oh. snookered himself. Just trying to hit the ball and leave it safe. Bring Q all the way back to the other end of the table. Go ahead, four. In the Hopefully game. it'll hide behind the four, but yeah. didn't quite happen. No. Howard's got a combination shot here one on the five, five ball. Yeah, one five. Game, yeah. <laughs> Yellow to orange. It's tough when you're on the other side of the table to make a combination yeah. shot like that. Sometimes if you crack mm -hmm. it too hard, mm -hmm. it dances in the corner too much and shoots out, and that's what happened there. That's right. <laughs> also, he was near the rail. The cue ball was near the rail, and uh, lose accuracy. Steve's going to try the one ball here. I mean, he's going to most likely make one ball. The problem is the two ball. Now, two's up against the nine, but uh, I don't think it can go. He's Believe looking me, he's at looking it. very carefully yeah, at looking, that you know, option. Yeah. Steve Miserak likes short stories whenever possible. He takes that's, the combination out. That's right. This could be a billiard shot. We could see a billiard shot here. He would, in which he would hit the two very, very thin. He's looking at it. It's, uh, it's hard to see how thinly you have to hit it, actually. Much less execute it. And for him, it will also be a uh, left-handed shot, nine, won't it? Nine appears to possibly be able to go off the six. Uh, we can't really tell from the angle we have here. Either way, he's looking to try to make that nine ball. Our victory is hoping he will not. Oh, don't oh. scratch in the side. Mm. Oh, he, we Close. didn't see he had plenty of room for the two. 
and he elected not to go for a yeah. combination of sorts. Had a nice clean hit on the two, almost scratched, uh, but didn't. It was a clean shot, but I don't know how much room he had. I think that was a very difficult shot. He's got the four, he's shooting off the rail. He wants to come back across the table for the five, but it's a tough shot anyway. Oh, did he hit Lovely it so smoothly. Nice Howard Vickery telling him nice shot. I missed it. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> I thought he did. I'm trying to dog it out. <laughs> I won't let you. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> Good little bit of camaraderie here between these two opponents, uh, which, is, which is rare in this game. Uh, That's it. Steve Miserak wins his eighth game, taking game number 12. He now leads Howard Vickery eight to four. It's do or die time when we come back from this commercial message. Various players from this third annual Caesars Billiards Classic have involved themselves with trick shots. Here's one from Bill Staten. Hi, I'm Bill Staten from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I have a shot here I call the football shot for all you football fans out there. This is a game between Notre Dame and Slippery Rock College in Pennsylvania. I have all the small solid balls on this side. They represent the Slippery Rock player. All the striped balls are the big, powerful Notre Dame player. What is going to happen on this? It's in the fourth quarter. There's six seconds to go in the game. Slippery Rock's on their own one-yard line. They must score a touchdown in this side pocket. This is the quarterback. He's going to hand off to a guy that is eight-ball Eddie. He must run a touchdown in that side pocket. Let's see what happens. Slippery Rock wins. 13 to 12. <laughs> well, I don't know if Coach Faust would have liked that shot at all, but uh, Bill Staten is a Southern gentleman pool player from South Carolina. He's also known as Weenie Beanie. And I wonder if Weenie Beanie went to Slippery Rock. <laughs> oh, God. We're back with game number 13 in a race to nine. Steve Miserak is right at the door of victory while we see Howard Vickery at the jaws of defeat. It's do or die time for Vickery, but Miserak's at the table. Miserak gets to break. And all Vickery can do is watch and hope he gets a chance at the table. Uh, Steve Miserak is very imposing at this point in the match. Uh, I don't know if he's going to make the uh, nine on the break, but uh, if he gets a clear lay of the table, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he were to run the rack. Very imposing at this point. Well, Howard Vickery's going to get another chance here. This is when nerves really come into play. You're behind eight to four. You know if you make one mistake, your opponent wins the game, the match, you're out of the tournament. It can cause you to miss an easy shot. There is one comforting thought because Howard Vickery, the worst he can do is finish third. He'll at least go home with $9,000 in his pocket. There was a $750 entry fee, so you subtract that, and it's still an $8,000 profit, maybe minus expenses or two, yeah. and Uncle Sam, three or $4,000. Not bad well, for three or four days' work. I think a little more than three or 4000 you can clear out of that, but uh, well, I'm, I'm including traveling costs, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we'll have to talk to his travel agent okay. for that uh, <laughs> back in Reynoldsburg, but it ain't small change. I'll take it. We'll start practicing, Lee. You can get in this tournament. 
I'll be the great grandmother of billiards by the time I get good enough to play with these fellows. <laughs> and then so. Uh -huh. And by that time, I'd probably have cataracts and couldn't see what I was doing. So back to the game at hand. One and two down. Three's blocked by the four. It's got a tough situation here. I think you can see the three ball. He's going to shoot the three in the corner. He did need a clear enough view of yeah, it. And he's got a real good, good shot on the four. Four looks good. Four looks good. Five is out. Five front is of, sitting by himself. It's out in front of him. Yeah. How he brings it back from the five will determine how well the six is sitting. But right now the four is on his mind. Yeah, there's no. there's the kind of miss. No fall. Just just the shot was not true enough. Just was not true enough. Ah. <laughs> uh. He's kicking himself. Look at this. Oh, that's some bad roll. That's some bad roll. The ball seemed to pick up a little speed. The ball seemed to pick up a little speed as it neared the uh, side pocket. Cue ball in hand. Seems to hesitate and blinko in the drinko. Cue ball in hand for Howard Vickery. The four ball is spotted. <laughs> And it's not really that great a situation. Well, well, it does have one angle on it. It's, it's a good break. side pocket. Yeah, that's really no, about it. There's, there, there's no trouble here, Leandro. Uh, he's trying to figure out how to. He's lucky he doesn't have to spot it behind the head stringer. Yeah. Cue ball behind the head string. Then he'd have trouble. he have trouble. This, this shouldn't be too hard. Takes the four on the side. Hit the five in the corner. Bring the cue ball back enough to get a position on the six. Yeah, I think he's going to. Oh, the side pocket. I think he's going to fall down. Everybody's worried about the side pocket now. <laughs> worried about that side pocket scratch. He's going to draw it. He's going to draw it. And he's worried about the side pocket. See, that's what he was worried about. Go but off he, the rail. he was very careful that to, to draw it properly past the pocket, not be casual about it. You know, it's a crucial situation. And he just wanted a molecule between the cue ball and the rail, and he got it. Yeah. Now he's enough position on the six. Make the ball on six. If he makes the six, he won't have any trouble with position. Here's the seven. Good position for the seven. Bring it right back I'd out to that same to say spot. That, uh, this is game for Howard, Howard Vickery right here. Makes the seven. He can bring the cue right back up. Stay yeah. up, cue. And the eight. And I think Howard Vickery's going to stay alive. Hey, is that your prediction, Leanne? I'm going to oh. go. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Come on back, Don't jinx it, please. <laughs> <laughs> she called it. He yeah, did it. Howard Vickery it, yes. takes game number 13. Lucky 13 for Howard Vickery. And he now has picked up his fifth win. Steve Miserec still on top, though, 8 to 5. We'll be back with more from Caesars Tahoe right after this. We are back at Caesars Tahoe, and you see some former competitors from this very tournament now sitting on the bench. You see Alan Hopkins, commentator for ESPN, and a member of this competition was eliminated by Steve Miserak earlier before we got on the telecast. And Steve Miserak is knocking on the door of victory, and Howard Vickery is staying alive, though. He won game 13. Oh, how sweet it is. How sweet it is. Why did he need that? What a shot in the arm. Like it had eyes. Oh, that poker got us. Another look. Watch it just sashaying up to the corner yeah, got pocket. Got a little nudge from the five there as we saw it on the slow-mo. So Howard Vickery is smiling and that brought some life to the crowd. They like to see the underdog get a break. They certainly do. And he was trailing. Three eight, more times. I need three more. more. <laughs> somebody, somebody asked him three more times. He, he, he agrees. Would that be strange if that happened? Same way. Downright weird. 
people are yelling same way, same way. Oh, that yep. time the eight yep. ball kissed it. That wasn't, no. wasn't to happen. No, didn't even move, and uh, he didn't make anything. At least the ball's got tied up a little bit. Well, I got one more chance to dog it. did dog it. Everybody imploring Howard Vickery now to <laughs> to take advantage. Problem is Howard. Hi, what am I going to do? <laughs> Balls all paired up. Balls are all paired up. They are. It's funny. It's true. Look at those. The table got three sets of balls almost like couples there. Miserak just hit it a little too hard. Three sets of balls uh, practically welded together there. He's got the one ball, but uh, just to the right of that is the two ball, which is frozen up to the four. I think he just intends, oh, he oh. Just, just intends to play safety here. Not too far away. Down there, he break like everything out because you can hit it. He's got a dancing partner's table. That's Four right. with the five, eight tied up with the three, six with the seven. The Ohio Waltz. Two and four, holding hands there. He's got to hit the two first. That's why the referee is scrutinizing the contact. Good save. That's a good save. He stopped that ball, the cue ball control, enabled him to stop directly behind the four. See, let's watch the way he hits that. Oh, boy, that's sweet. He knows that the cue ball is going to move about one or two inches forward, but no more than that. He looks a little happy. Yeah. I think we see a great <laughs> defensive battle ahead of yeah. us here. Possibly, quite possibly, with these balls all locked up together. Or in pairs, rather. There's the two, but the story is down at the other end where the cue ball is hiding behind the four. Yeah, we're going to. Just looking at the kick shot. Kick or Massé here? Tough choice. He's going to kick off that rail there as we, as we look at him stroking down on it. A nice hit. And Howard tells him nice hit, too. Oh, look where it lands. Right back yeah. where it started from. That's Side of relief from Miserac. That's, that's pretty strong. Takes a hell of a man for you Howard Vickery to, at this point, uh, when he's on uh, eight, to say nice shot. We know what he's really thinking, though. Nice shot. Wish I had made it. Wish I didn't have to respond to it. He kicks at it. Well, I think Mizrak has a view of it, but not really the best position to be in. Yeah, he's got a combination shot here. Even with uh, the uh, five up against the Oh, the wall boy, like oh yeah, boy. well, and he knows it's difficult. Beautiful Get shot. 
this looks like a square dance the way these, yeah, these yeah. balls are hanging around two by two. But he does have a shot at the at the two. This is a great shot. He used the rail actually. Once again, nice shot. That sometimes can be used to psych the opponent. I don't think so in this case. I think this Steve. tournament is, is so long and so testing. I think these guys truly respect each other and they really admire somebody making a good shot. I, I think they are sincere comments when they're complimenting each other. I think this uh, game and match could be over. I think Miserak will run out. We'll see a nine to six victory for Steve Miserak. Seems to be. Seems to be the magic number. Our first two quarterfinals were won by nine to six margins. I missed it. Oh, oh. I did. I missed it. Oh. I spoke too soon. And he knew it the minute he stroked it. Trying to play safe. I'm so worried that's, about that shit. That's really surprising me, Andrew. Was, uh, was, it, was it something I said? I can't. No. I, I, think it, I think it was a concentration lapse. Uh, these players, as you just mentioned, uh, have played uh, an incredibly, incredible amount of matches. Uh, they do get tired. They just forget sometimes. They take a shot for granted. That was a shot that could be taken for granted. It was such an easy shot. Well, this doesn't look too easy to me. What are, what are his options? Well, he has a chance to bank it. If I miss it one. <laughs> he, yeah, he knows that if he, if he, he he's, uh. he's looking at the bank shot. He's also got one foot in the grave, and I'm sure he's yeah, got that in his mind. That's right, the deep six. And uh, he also may play safe. I don't think he'll lose. I think he's going to go for the shot. Go for the bank shot. Cross side. No, nope. just missed. Never happened. Was he trying to? Yeah, do he missed it by about a oh, half inch half there. Inch. Oh, Lord. Do you think he was right in trying to do what he did? Think he should have gone for the safe, or was that really the only choice he had? I think uh, I think he was right to do what he did because uh, to, to play safety there is a real sign of weakness, and uh, and also there was no guarantee that a safe would come out in. Um, <laughs> good shape for him. There was, there was, there's not enough room for movement when there are only three balls left on the table. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Oh, it's going to be the match, right. and I'm glad I didn't. Because yeah, again, I'm glad you didn't also, Leandra. I, I, I almost did, but another tough angle for Miserak. Yeah. I don't want to win. That's all there's to mm. Yeah. Just undercut it. He undercut I it. I could cry. Well, he didn't uh, save the grass. He, he, he left him absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. Really did. It's, it's quite unfortunate. Kick it in, maybe, huh? Kick it in. That stuff. He's on the rail. He's yeah. blocked by the nine ball. Hit it hard. And wish it well. <laughs> Hit it hard. And wish it well. <laughs> That's a trick shot there, right there. We we need a trick shot uh, expert. We asked Howard Vickery if, uh, if he cared to do a little trick shot for us and he said I only know how to make balls. I, I know how to play nine ball but I don't know. <laughs> he uh, I think he believes all of his shots might yeah. be trick shots at one time. Yeah. <laughs> really eyeing this and taking the time and well who should. He ended up doing a trick shot so. for us. But, uh, uh, He's very his, serious his, about the game, that's all. Well, his tricks come up within the realm of nine ball. In a situation like this, he needs to pull out a trick shot.
I can't hit, hit that shot at all. Just had to kick at it. So go up to the rail and come back down at it. He, at least he doesn't have a straight shot at it. That's what he did. He kicked at it and left a nice setup. Yeah, he did. And uh, now. Well, he's going to have to cut a pretty hard. He's, gonna, he's got a hard uh, cut shot, if only because he can't hit it softly enough and have it travel to the pocket, to the nearest, uh, to the lower right-hand corner pocket. He can't hit it softly enough and have it tra uh, travel there and also leave the cue ball down there on that end of the table. Oh, he, that was a beautiful pretty. shot. Ball drops for Steve Dare we say game point and Leandra, match? Leandra, I think. Uh, should, should I? Yeah. This is it, America. Steve Miserec is going to win the semifinals. <laughs> he's not sure himself. He's, he's at this point, he, he's, he's missed so many shots. I'm ready for a Miller right now. So Steve Miserec sizing things up, going all around the table, easing the tension. Final shot. He does it. Yeah. Steve Miserak wins his ninth game and doing so takes the semifinal match. Will play in the finals and has at least guaranteed himself twelve thousand five hundred or a shot for twenty-five thousand. So Steve Miserak defeats Howard Vickery by a score of nine to six. Steve Miserak winning the race tonight. We'll be back to recap all the action and have some final comments after this commercial message. Stay with us here in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Steve Miserec won our semifinal match by defeating Howard Vickery 9-6. For Vickery, it's a third place finish and a check for $9,000, while Miserec will play for the honors in the finals. Our winner is standing by, John Stravinsky. Ask away, John. Steve, you had him 8-4 to there at a certain point, and all of a sudden things started to change. What happened? I don't know. No, you were playing excellently, and all of a sudden, the uh, last few games there, it seemed like a struggle to get this match uh, over with. There's a little red fruit that's grown up in Washington, and it's delicious, Macintosh, whatever you want to call it, and it's the proverbial apple, and that's what I got there for a while. I find it hard to believe. How do you feel about your chances for the next match? I'll let you know when I'm done. All right. <laughs> Good luck, Steve. Back to you, Leandra. Thank you, John Stravinsky. Steve Miserac will face Earl Strickland for the championship and the $25,000 first prize. But once again, our final here in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, Steve Miserac, nine, Howard Vickery, six. Steve Miserac wins the semifinal competition. For John Stravinsky, I'm Leandra Raleigh. So long, everybody, from the third 